Welcome to Sound Doctrine Studio, an Israel of God production. Join us Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time to hear topics taught by teachers of the Israel of God's worldwide ministry and proven by the Word of God. Each lesson will be followed by a Q&A session and closing remarks. You won't want to miss it. everyone to Sound Doctrine Studio. This is I, Israel of God production. I am Brother Mike. I am uh, over the Rialto, California class. And today our teacher will be Brother Jude, Brother uh, Jacob out of uh, Riverdale. Reader will be Brother Joshua. What's going on, brothers? Peace, peace. brother. Good evening. Grace and peace, brother. All right. Peace so I'm gonna, I'll turn it over to you, man. What's the title? What we got today, man? We got sound doctrine of the word, sound doctrine of the word. And you know, uh, when you have sound doctrine of the word, that means this is something, it's pure. You know, it's, it, it can be proven, it can be confirmed, it's understood. And the number one thing is it stays consistent. That means it don't change. That's what makes it sound because it's something you heard before, something that's distinctive. and. The word of God fits every bit of that. Amen. Amen. So we want to get off into it. Yes, sir. Let's go. All right. <clears throat> Let's start this off at Titus, the second chapter. Titus, the second chapter. Because, see, what you have is you have a lot of people want to deal with the word of God. But even the word of God tells you how to wield the word of God. It tells you how to distribute the word of God. It's consistent and it's the same. This is what we're going to see in this lesson. Titus uh, 2 and verse 1. Titus 2 and 1. Go ahead, brother. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Speak thou the things that become sound doctrine. You understand? That's what you want to speak. Go ahead and read. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate sound in faith, in charity, in patience. See, this is where all that's going to come. Once it, Because you're sure about what you're dealing with. You're consistent with the word. Then that brings about, because your faith in it, you believe in it. So now that brings about patience with it as well. Because you know exactly what you're dealing with here. Skip down to verse 8 and read it. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. See, sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he, that they may be ashamed. You understand? Because, see, they can't say nothing evil about you. They're talking about the word here. Because that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with sound doctrine. And you put them to shame. Because, see, a lot of them want to deal with things, uh, well, just made up, things that they can't prove. You know, the Lord tell you out of the law, and the testimony, that is how you're supposed to distribute the word. Because if you don't do it that way, it's no light in it. There's no truth in what you're dealing with. So the ones that's not dealing with sound doctrine, you bring them the same. So they don't have nothing evil to say about you. Now they speak about the word, but then that's between them and God now. That's right. You done took yourself out of the whole thing there. Because you're dealing with how you got to deal with it. Skip down to verse 11. Verse 11 and read. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So this is, it is for, it's open for all men. This have appeared to all men. This is something that we all have access to. This salvation, because God wants salvation for all. 
contrary to this false doctrine that's out there that God only wants to save or have salvation for a small group of people. That's right. This thing have appeared to all men. Go ahead and read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly. Mm -hmm. right? And godly in this present world. So, hey, just we're supposed to live godly, righteous in this present world because this this present world is evil. I mean, it is wicked in this world here. So, this world teaches us godliness, but we got to deal with it. You got to deal with it soundly because it's it's in that order already. So, we got to deal with it in that order. Skip down to verse fifteen. These these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise thee these things speak speak things of step become sound doctrine things that connect things that make sense precepts that come together and form a picture so you can understand what's going on let no man despise thee because they don't have anything evil to say because you're dealing with it the way the Lord say deal with it. That's right. See, so how you go about putting others to shame with this thing? Let's look at that. Let's go to Isaiah the 8th chapter. Isaiah the 8th chapter. Because the Lord tells you, even with the, when dealing with this word, he said a workman that needed not be ashamed himself, rightfully dividing the word of truth. So when you rightfully do this thing with this, because you're dealing in sound doctrine, Hey, you put others to shame that don't do it that way because they can never prove what they're talking about. They never have evidence to confirm what they're trying to put on the table because they're not doing it like the Lord say do it. The Lord even tell you how to, how to distribute this word. Isaiah 8 and verse 16, 8 and 16. Look what he say. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Bind the testimony. That means, hey, bind it. Lock it down. Seal the law among my disciples. Uh, he said, I don't have no disciples. He's letting you know that you got to deal with these both sides. You got to deal with the entire book. No one buy, buys a book and just read the last end of the page, the end. Right. Neither do they buy a book and spend their money and read the first page in the beginning and then close the book up and that's it. You don't know what's going on. Skip down to verse 20 and read. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. To the law, that's Moses and the prophets, and to the testimony when you deal with this Bible, Jesus and the apostles. If you don't deal with it, with what you're trying to put on the table, then there's no truth in what you're talking about. Hmm. You cannot get landed in one part of the book and expect to have some light or some truth. You got to put it all together. You got to get a piece here. You got to get a piece there. Put this puzzle together. Now I see the big picture. Now I see. Now I understand because that's what the Lord is all about. He wants you to understand this thing. So he tell you and give you a way to you have to put it together so that you can put it out there for others to understand. And this is simply not going on. That's why it's not sound doctrine. Let's go to Isaiah the 29th chapter. See, if you don't do it in this order, then you're coming up with your own thing. And the Lord tell you to lean, lean not to your own understanding. And when you're trying to do things yourself and do it on your own, you're incorrect because you're not walking with the Lord. You're going ahead of the Lord. And men tell God all the time, I'm smarter than you. They tell God, I'm smarter than God. My doctrine is better than, the, than yours. And this is what we're going to see here. Isaiah 29 and verse 15. 29 and 15. And the Lord is looking at this here. Go ahead. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us. So the, look, he said, woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel. You understand? You got guys that don't deal with this word of God, line upon line, law and testimony. So they out here just running their mouth. And they saying to themselves, well, who knoweth us? 
Who seeth us? Like God don't understand that you putting false doctrine out there that you don't understand what you teaching. Like God don't show other men that you don't know what you're talking about and your, your doctrine is not sound. Like in the case of uh, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, it was revealed to Peter, Ananias, why are you lying? Why you do that? It was revealed to him because he's able to see that. See, the Lord does that with me. He said, woe unto them that seek deep to hide your counsel. Who see of us and who know of us? Like you just going to put everything out there that you want to put out. And the Lord ain't going to judge you for the words that you speak. Amen. Because look what he said they doing. Go ahead and read. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Uh-huh. For, for shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall a thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. And that's what they doing. They telling the Lord, you don't have no understanding. So whatever you set up, I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to do it my way. In other words, I'm going to take your law and say it ain't no more. Oh, you turned his thing upside down when he told you, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right. I'm going to teach God. I'm going to take the Lord's Sabbath day, and I'm going to turn it upside down and make it the first day of the week and not the seventh day of the week. You telling the Lord you don't have no understanding when you gave the seventh day. You should have put it on the first day. See, this is what they're telling the Lord. When you turn in it, he say it's going to be a steam like the potter's clay. See, a potter, he can form his clay into whatever he wants. He can make it a bowl. He can make it a cup. He can make whatever he wants. And if he decide to decide to make it out of nothing, he'll make it nothing. See, that's what the Lord said. He going to make your doctrine nothing because you turn his thing upside down and you're doing your own thing. And that's what me and is telling God when you don't do it in due order like he's telling you. Because you're doing your own thing. That's going to be destroyed. Because the Lord is going to put his truth. Let's go to Hebrews, the fifth chapter. I mean, when you try to teach this sound doctrine and you give them the instructions of God, all of a sudden, because pride rolls up, now all of a sudden you become contentious. Because that's what pride brings about, contention. Because you don't want to be corrected. And the Lord say correction is the way of life. Uh -huh. It's the way of life. We go through all the time through this thing and we learn. But the moment you start to put blockers on your ears and you know everything and you don't want to change your way when it's time to. Or if there's a need to make an adjustment. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. And we have brothers and sisters out here like that. Hebrews, the fifth chapter and verse 12. Hebrews 5 and 12. Read. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers. Uh-huh. You have need that one teach you again. You have need that one teach you. For when the time comes, you are to be teachers. Somebody got to teach you in order to be a teacher. Go ahead and read. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. The first principles of the oracles of God. Oracles means answers. This is the first principle of the oracles of God that you be taught. It's just like when you get out there, it's like if you're in school. And you're going to get a quiz or you're going to get a test. First of all, the answers hadn't been given to you in the first place. Right. Now you study the answers. Now when it's time to take the quiz, now it's time to be tested. You put that away. So now let's see what your answers are. But you had to have been taught the answers at one point in time. That is the first principle of the oracles of God that you be taught what the oracles are. How are you going to teach answers and you don't know what the answer is because the answer have not been taught to you? Right. So that's the first principle of the oracles of God. Go ahead. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. And that's right. And I'm sure that milk is that sweet milk of the word. And you got to start off with simple things, small stuff. And then as you increase in understanding, you increase in knowledge, then you start getting to the complicated things. Now you got teeth. Now you can chew steak because now you done moved away from the baby food. Right. 
See, these things are important. And this is what the Lord teaches us. And he keeps it sound because you know why? It goes for each and every last one of us the same. Nothing different. Nobody's excluded from doing these this, uh, 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 for these things to apply when you on your way to teaching. It applies to everybody. Let's go to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Proverbs, the first, because see, this man wants to put his own doctrine out there. And this is what the Lord is steady warning us about when he say, take heed that no man deceive you. Because many going to come in his name saying he, saying he is Christ and going to deceive many. And always going to come to you righteously as if they following God, but they not following God until they prove that. That's why I say sound doctrine is something that's pure. That means there's nothing added to it. There's nothing taken away from it. It, it's, it can be proven. It can be confirmed. So you can understand it and it stays consistent all throughout. All throughout. Proverbs 4 and verse 1. Proverbs 4 and 1. Look at this doctrine here. Go ahead and read. Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. That's the first thing. Hear. If you don't hear, then how can I give you instructions? Hear in instructions of a father and attend to no understanding because the Lord said with all your wisdom and knowledge of what you know, get understanding. Get understanding. Go ahead and read. For I, for I give you good doctrine. Uh-huh. Forsake ye not my law. Oh, that's a good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Right there. That's a good doctrine. So why do we have brothers out here and sisters teaching that the law is no more? Since when have not keeping the law no more become a not a good doctrine? This is a good doctrine. Forsake not my law. Go ahead and read. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Uh-huh. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words. Let my heart, let your heart retain my words. What are those words? Read it. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments and live. This is a good doctrine. Yes, it is. This was the testimony of Jesus to a young man that asked him, Lord, what must I do that I may have eternal life? He said, keep the commandments yes. because that is a good doctrine. That doctrine started all the way in the beginning and it has not changed. And it's still, it is still your way into salvation. Forsake ye not my law. That is a good doctrine. Let's go to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Matthew, the fifth chapter. And let's just, just hear it from Jesus' mouth himself, because if the all of a sudden keeping the commandments or keeping the law is all of a sudden become not a good doctrine, then Jesus should tell us about that, right? Yes. He should tell us about that. He should tell us just that. And let's see what Jesus said in regards to that good doctrine of keeping the law, not forsaking the commandments. Matthew 5 and verse 17. Go ahead and read it. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Uh-huh. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Think not that I've come to destroy the law. I don't know why it is that they read this and it say, think to destroy the law. Think that I've come to destroy the law. It's they keep in touch. He said, think not. That means don't think that I came to this. Don't think that I came to destroy the law. All the prophets I came to fulfill. And that's everything that was written about him in the commandments, in the law. Because they pierced his hand and his foot. It was written. He had to come and they had to pierce his hand and his foot. He had to die for the sins of the people. So he had to be killed. He fulfilled all that. Think not that I've come to destroy. So look what he said here. Verse 19. If somebody have interpreted, interpreted it wrong. Verse 19. Go ahead and read. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Uh, wait a minute. 
Who so you mean the Lord called them least? You mean these commandments are least? Whosoever break one of these least commandments, oh, that you know, that's it's a small thing. Right. Whosoever break one of these least commandments, go ahead and read. And shall teach men so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, you're going to be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. What's the least in the kingdom of heaven? That's the lake of fire. With flesh worms eating on your body at the same time, fire and brimstone is burning all the day forever. Forever. For breaking one of these least commandments? Mm -hmm. Wow. Go ahead and read. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same should be called great in the kingdom of heaven but whosoever shall do and teach them you got to do it and teach them you'll be called great in the kingdom of heaven and in that case you'll be on a throne judging and ruling with christ mm -hmm. you'll be able to judge the ones that break the one of these least commandments see that's the thing here it's the thing. Brother Mike, the Lord called these least commandments. What do you mean that how they all least when there's such a great uh, 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 reward for it? Right. Great reward. Great in the kingdom of heaven or least. See, this is going to determine the least or the greatest in an individual. Mm -hmm. That's a sound doctrine. That is a sound doctrine. We read it in the law and Jesus confirmed it in the testimony. Let's go to Genesis, the third chapter. See, this is what I want to show about when it's sound, it's consistent. You've heard it before. Genesis, the third chapter, because after Adam sinned against God, God told him, look, the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's the day you shall surely die. And then he told him that after you die, where he going to go? Right. Genesis three and verse 19. Genesis three and verse 19. Go ahead and read it. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. He said, in the sweat of your face shall you eat your bread till you return to the ground. That confirms Genesis 2 and 7. God formed man from the dust of the ground. So that makes sense that you will return there. Why is there a doctrine that you go into heaven? Where did that come from? That's not sound. That's not consistent. It is this here, this verse 19 is so consistent. You can even see it with your own eyes because we always see when they when we bury our loved ones, they always leave the memorial building, put the, the uh, casket in a hearse and they drive into the cemetery and they put that body in the ground, don't they? Yes, they do. We see that with our very own eyes. That, that confirms that it's sound. It's consistent because you can see it with your own eyes. When you look outside the Bible, you can see exactly and say, guess what? The word of God is true. Amen. The word of God. You can say the word of God is true. And this is why the Lord wants you to deal with sound doctrine here. Because again, let's go. Let's look at what Jesus said about this doctrine here. Let's see what Jesus said about this doctrine. Again, we're going from law to testimony. We're doing it in its order. That's right, brother. Because if he said you don't do it that way, there's no light and no truth in what you're talking about. You ain't putting nothing together. That's right, brother. Put nothing together. John, the third chapter. And this is the Lord. He was talking to Nicodemus. And I want to point out something he said. John 3 and verse 11. Go ahead and read. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know. Hey, he said we speak that we do know. Yes. See, that's the thing. 
We not just is coming up with something that, hey, after blue, hey. Something that don't make, we speak that we do know. Go ahead. And testify that we have seen. And testify that we have seen. That's why I made the point that when we, we see them leave the cemetery and put their body in the ground, we testify things we know we can prove and that we have seen with our eyes. That's proof to me. You can tell me one thing all day long, all day long, but until I see it with my own eyes, now I'm convinced because I say I see it myself. This we speak with that we do know and we testify that we have seen, but look at the world here. Go ahead and read. And ye receive not our witness. And you don't receive our witness, but you expect me to receive your witness of something that you've never seen, that nobody never seen in their life, nobody can prove. And you expect me to receive that. Right. That's why we testify things we know and that we have seen. And then you can see it with your own eyes so that you can be convinced in your own mind. That's why the Bible tells you, let every man be convinced in his own mind. Because it can be told to you all day long. But until you are convinced within yourself, it is just a rumor. Skip down to verse 13. We testify that we have seen. Go ahead and read. And no man hath ascended up to heaven. Because we have not seen that. So this is why we don't teach that. We don't teach somebody going to heaven. We ain't seen nobody go to heaven. You ain't never saw it. It can't be proven. Always in somebody's imagination or somebody's dream or somebody's vision. See, the Lord gives us all a common thing that we can all look at for ourselves and say, yeah. I see this thing for myself. Like Paul said, he know that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. And nobody walked up to Paul and said, you know, Christ died for our sins. Oh, hey, man. No, no. He said he found that in the scriptures. Yes, he did. And that he died and rose the third day according to the scriptures. Anybody walk up with this conversation? Documentation. Documentation. And no man is ascended to heaven, but one has. Who is that? Go ahead and but, read. But he that came down from heaven, mm -hmm. even the son of man which isn't in heaven. And that's Jesus there. He's speaking about himself. He's the one that came down from heaven. Only one. He's the one that ascended to heaven. Only one, himself. Everybody else came from the dust of the ground. That's why we go bury our loved ones back there again. Where did this doctrine of going to heaven come from? It didn't come from God. Where did the, the Lord change in the Sabbath day from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week? It did not come from God. Brother Mike, I'm sure you can bring, you can come up and, and Brother Josh, I'm sure y'all got some other things that we, we see today that it's just not supported by the word of God. That's right, brother. That's right. I, I, I'm going to turn it on over to you, Brother Mike. I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. So, hey, let's um, check out one thing. Go. We're, we're going to check out a few things, but we're going to start with 1 John 4 and 4, man. What's up? And the Lord have always warned us about people to, that's going to distort his word mm. and don't compromise it. it. It's holy. That means it is consistent throughout without variableness, without change, without any. It don't need you to add to it. It don't need you to take away from all it needs to be is read and understood. Mm -hmm. Right. So check this out. First John four and four. When you get it, go ahead, brother. All right. First example for Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that's, that is that's in first John 4 and 4. Is it? Yes, first John 4 and 4. Uh-huh. Go go to uh John 4 and 4. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. It should not be that one. Let me see. Let me get over here to this too. It's our good book anyway. <laughs> Amen.
No, I'm sorry, man. That's not that ain't it. Go to uh, I tell you what, go to Isaiah 34 and 16. Yes, sir. Let's move forward. When you get it, go ahead. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. Mm. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit it hath gathered them. So the, he says, seek out of the book of the Lord and read it. Mm -hmm. Not prophesy on your own uh, perceptions of what you think. That's right. Because this word was written and it was written for a reason. So he don't want us to add to it, don't want us to take away from it. It's holy. That means that it is perfect. That's right. All right. So he wants us to seek it, seek him out of this book, and then read it. And this is why. Go to Isaiah 29. Pick it up, verse 7, man. Isaiah 29, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead. And the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel. Hold Even on, that, that's 29 and 7? Yes, that's Isaiah Hold 29 on, and 7. Hold on, brother. Let me go back. I got two or three lessons in here, man. Go to, right. go to, go to Malachi 2, verse 7. It's all good, brother Mike. You ain't coming out the Quran. We know you coming straight out. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. You got it? So, all right, get it. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So this is why we, we can't just prophesy based on our emotions or what we think is right. That's right. Because yeah. people are seeking the truth. They're seeking the word of God. And that's what they should find at the priest's lips. Not lies. Not variableness. Not them preaching according to what they think. Because the scripture is not of any private interpretation. Amen. Go to Second Peter. 1 verse 9. I'm sorry. 1 verse 19. Because, you know, a lot of times they be like, uh, you know, that Old Testament ain't no good. It's been done away with. Right. But the Lord said, Jesus said, I, Lord, I come in a volume of, of the book. It is written to me. That means the old and the new. Mm -hmm. Right. So look what he said here. Second Peter one, verse 19. Go ahead. We have also a sure word of a more sure word of prophecy. Yes, so what does that tell us, man? That tell us that, hey, we have the testimony in the new, but we got a more sure word of prophecy. Yes, that's right. Because the New Testament just testify of the old. That's right. And it's consistent through. There is no contradiction. No, sir. The scripture also said the person that thinks there's contradiction, they contradiction in their mind. Mm. Right. But check this out. Go ahead. Where unto ye do well that ye take heed. Do what to it? Take, take heed. heed. Take heed to it, right? Go ahead. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. If we in a dark place and somebody turn on a light, we all going to look at it, right? That's right. That's right. And that light light the way to eternal life. Go ahead. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now he going to say it right here. Go ahead. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation Amen. that was absolute it wasn't it it said Amen. no prophecy no way around it no way none of it you see so i don't need to hear you preach about what god has said to you because if it ain't if it don't coincide with what's written in the book it don't pertain to salvation right it ain't of god that's right right, right? go ahead for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Brother Jacob, what the Holy Ghost doing in the Old Testament? Thank you, Mike. <laughs> so, 
Yes, Come sir. on, the Lord operate the same way throughout time. He say, I am God and I do not change. That's right. So he operate the same way. He explained that to us in Revelations. Mm -hmm. Right? How the Father gave it to Jesus. Jesus gave it to the angel. The angel gave it to the prophet. That's mm -hmm. right. You see? Saying he operate the same way. And this is what we are supposed to do. Go to Ecclesiastes 12. Pick it up in verse 9. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 12, verse 9. Mm -hmm. All right. When you get it, go ahead, man. And moreover, because the preacher was wise. What kind of preacher is this? It's a wise one, right? That's right. Let's see what he's going to do. Go ahead. He still taught the people knowledge. He still taught the people knowledge, regardless of what they wanted to hear. They had these itching ears. They want to hear lies. They want to hear smooth things. He taught them knowledge, the knowledge mm -hmm. of the Lord. Out of the word of God. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Brother Jacob, ain't that what you did today? That's right. Same That's right. thing. We follow the same prescription. The Lord has set this prescription right. for us to follow and how to relay his word and minister his word to people. And Amen. guess what? It ain't going to get no sounder than this. Exactly. Right? He told us, hey, 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 because he was wise, he knew I got to go to the word. I got to give good heed. I got to learn it first mm -hmm. and then live it. And then I'm going to keep seeking out the information and the knowledge and the understanding. And I'm going to set in order many proverbs right. out of the word of God. Not of my own accord, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words the words are acceptable to who to god that's right not that's right because man, man want to hear what he want to hear that's right brother and that is not sound right mm -hmm. not at we all. go after our emotions and that's unstable that's unsound yes right so he gonna seek out acceptable words to god that's gonna edify the people right go mm -hmm. ahead and that which was written was upright even words of truth come so on that brother. tell us right there right then and there that we had to get this understanding this soundness this knowledge out of the word of god not out the apocrypha mm. not out of the maccabees no no you see not on no lost book if a book is lost what you doing with it exactly if if, yeah. if if there was a book of enoch i say this all the time how did it get across the flood that's right. <laughs> exactly the word wasn't, wasn't even written down until the lord gave it to moses so moses would tell us anything that enoch had to say come on brother but it ain't there is it no sir because it is unsound that's right it's unsound go to matthew man matthew 13 verse 52 Teach that word, brothers. Yes, this how and this how we got to bring it. You, Jacob, you said it, but this, the script gonna 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 say it too. Matthew mm -hmm. thirteen verse fifty two. Go ahead. This is the Lord's prescription. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure. Things new and old. That's See, this right. is how we prove yes, that sir. it's sound. Yes, sir. You know, we're gonna bring it. He said he's he always said to the law and the testimony, right? Mm -hmm. So here we we're gonna go to the law. We're gonna bring stuff out of the old and we're gonna confirm it with the new. That's right. And it's gonna be consistent throughout. Could why? Because it's holy, and it's given by the mouth of one shepherd, which That's is right. Jesus Christ, right? And he got it from the Father. Amen. You see. Go to uh, 18, Matthew 18, verse 16. I'm there. All right. Go ahead. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. <laughs> that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Yes, sir. How many words? Every word, right? Yes, sir. Every this, is word. What we, this is what we do with the word of the Lord. 
We're going to take Jeremiah. We're going to take Isaiah. We might take some Matthew. We might go to Acts. We might go to Revelation. And then we might go back to Genesis, depending on what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And we're going to confirm every word out of what's written in the book, not about what we say. Because right. the soundness is of the Lord. Go to 2 Timothy 2.15. And this is what we need to do. And this is what the Lord is looking for right here. Yes, sir. Because this is how we know something is sound. If we don't put our time in, you know how they say you got to burn the midnight oil? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, look, sir. look at what he's going to say here. 2 Timothy 2.15. Just read that one and we good. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Unto who? Unto God. God. <laughs> unto the Lord, right? That's right. Uh, Go ahead. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. What type of workman? That means this put you got to put in some work in this. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You got to get in this book and put in some work because it's sound. That's right. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Out of the old, out of the new, by the mouth of two or more witnesses, let it be established. That is the Lord's precept. That is his prescription for reading his word. That's right. And understanding it. And that's how we prove that it's sound. That's right. And not just something we came up with. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, it sound good. I'm going to follow that. No. Why does that way to lead to destruction? Mm -hmm. There was the way to, re to lead to life. And it's few to go there. That's yeah. right. But this is what we got to do. Go ahead. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And we got to rightly divide the word of truth. You see, we just can't make up stuff and say, oh, I'm going to use my private interpretation of this. And I'm going to say whatever I want to say. Mm -hmm. You see? We got to rightly divide it. But most of all, we got to study to show ourselves approved unto God so that he can reveal his truth unto us. And we got to preach this word according to his prescription. Why? Because it is sound. That's yes. right. And it will stand. All right, bro. I'm getting back to you. I'm good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. yes, sir. I appreciate that, brother. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and, and you know, they try to land somewhere in, in, in one. If, if Paul said that the law ain't no more then one of the prophets or Moses had to say it. it's got to be there. It's got to right. be there in order to, for, uh, to establish that to be a fact. It's got to be there. It's got to be there. Let's sure. let's go to let's go to uh, uh, first Corinthians, the 14th chapter. Because because Brother Mike just let he let us know it, it's got to be consistent. It's, it's, it's consistent. First Corinthians, the 14th chapter and verse seven. Look what the Lord is saying. Look at what Paul was saying in these writings. First Corinthians right. 14 and verse seven. Go ahead. And even things without life, giving sound, mm -hmm. whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sound. How shall it be known what is pipe or harp? See, He's likening information to an right. instrument. A violin does not sound like a drum. A harmonica does not sound like an organ. It all has its distinction. Look what he's saying here. Go ahead and read. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So look, you're looking for a trumpet to sound. When the trumpet sounds in the, in the camp, that means the enemy is coming. Get ready. It's time to war. Something right. getting ready to go down. But if you're looking for the trumpet to sound and somebody play a harp, <laughs> you're going to miss what's going on. That's right, bro. Because it's a, it didn't give the, that distinctive sound. In other words, in other words, brothers and sisters, how is God going? How are you going to understand and follow God's word if it's going to keep changing? Right. Ooh. If it's not going to stay consistent, I'm looking for that trumpet to sound. Oh, that's a trumpet. So I know what to do. Yes. It has to be some consistency. And that's God's word. It always consistent. It stays the same. Let's look at Jesus. Hebrews, the eighth chapter, 13th chapter, rather. Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Peace, brother. 
you, you know, Brother Jacob, you said, how can you even know the sound if it changes? Well, you got folks saying it's done away with, so you don't even get the sound. Exactly. They done took it all the way away from you. Got done made you deaf. You don't hear nothing. <laughs> yeah. You don't hear nothing. And he, and he say also say that his sheep follow his voice. That's right. Exactly. So if, you, if a stranger talking about something, we, we don't want nothing to do with that. We could recognize right away that it's unsound. Exactly. <laughs> you ain't lying, brother Josh. That's what they give out now. You got now where you don't hear nothing. <laughs> they ain't heard nothing. Mute button. Somebody just talking about a voice. <laughs> oh, Lord. One crying in the wilderness. That's right. They ain't heard nothing. Hebrews 13 and 8. Go ahead and read. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, billions of years ago. The same today and to when tomorrow come, billions of years later, he will not change. The attitude that he had back in the day is the same attitude he had right now this moment. It won't change. This is how you can follow your God. This is how you can uh, 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 trust in your God and have faith in him because you know how he operates. He coming down the same road every time. I'm looking for him. There he is. Because he don't change. Go ahead and read. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. Be not carried away with diverse, strange, all these different doctrines. You're going to believe in this book, the apocryphal, like Brother Mike. You're going to believe in this book, this lost book. Somebody told you that and you was believing one thing. Oh, now you believe that. You carry it all about with everything. Stay mainstream because that's how God's word is. It's constant. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. Go ahead and read. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Uh-huh. Not with meats. Not about all this understanding, all this different knowledge from here and there. Go ahead and read. Which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Because it ain't profited you nothing. You everywhere. You can't quite say, hey, look, you you can't you can't even walk a straight line and you trying to do side steps. That's right. That's right. Be not carried about with all these different strange doctrines that cannot be proven in the word of God. That's what Lewis said. He said many books are going to be written, and it's weariness from much study. Much Boy, studiness is weariness. Man, to none the of them things pertaining to eternal life, man. It's a exactly. distraction, brother. Exactly. Because you believe in this one thing, and then all of a sudden you open to something else. Yep. You just didn't went away from that. You unstable. That's right. And this book they, is stable. They twist the word. <laughs> and twist the word. They twist the word. And the only reason they do that is because they set up their land in one man's mouth. Wait a minute. Paul is only one man. You got to get somebody else to say what Paul said, saying the same thing in order to confirm it. Jesus wouldn't let you take his own word for it. He says, search the scriptures. They That's testify right. of me. Yes, they, do. they testify of me. <laughs> you don't believe me? Go read. Go read uh, 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 Ezekiel. Go read Jeremiah. Go read Isaiah. Just like he was telling them guys, he, he expounded in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Yep. This is talking about me. If you ain't going to believe my mouth only, get it from another man's mouth. Peach, I can't bro. see. It's accuracy. Peach. It is accuracy. Because see, this type of uh, 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 sound doctrine, just like he said, you, you saying men that don't, don't deal with it like this. Let's go to Titus, the first chapter. Let's go back to Titus, the first chapter. So I love about the word of God is clear and it's precise. Don't change. Don't change. So you ain't got to chase it around. Like they try to give you the, uh, uh, the commandments. Lord say, if you love me, keep, keep my commandments. That's right. They put an if on there. That means, look, you got to make a decision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you put an if on a word, <laughs> it changes the whole thing on in front of a, a, a statement. It, it makes you make a decision. Because if I say I'll give you $100, you say, here, give it to me. Right. But if I say if, fix my car, 
fix my house, fix my roof, do this, do that, babysit my children, do that, that all that. Now you're going to decide well, if this money is worth all that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Why would he all of a sudden take away the commandments away? How is it that I'm supposed to show you that I love you or that I don't love you when you told me to wash your car and when I got ready to wash it, you drove off? <laughs> right, right. That's like doing that. Yep. I, I wanted yeah. to show you I, that I tell I love people you. That all the time, Jacob. Look, if you go to Revelations and he tell you, oh, you know, liars, whoremongers, and these people are in a lake of fire. Why are they there? Because they broke the law. Exactly. And if the law wasn't no more good, then God is unjust because he threw these people in a lake of fire for breaking it. Exactly. For breaking the law. That's unstable. That's unsound, brother. Unstable, unsound. I was listening to a guy today. You know, <laughs> we spent a lot of time on that app or whatever. Yeah, I got you. And this guy teaches against the law. That law ain't from me. You ain't got to keep the law. It's over with this and that. He asked the guy, are you a sinner? The guy said, no. He went in the book and showed him that you a liar, which is true. Scriptural wise. Mm -hmm. That who he that say he, he, don't, he don't have sin, he a liar. Because we all sinners. And I asked him, so wait a minute. How come his answer wasn't sufficient enough for you being that you say you don't have to keep the law? You promote exactly. people to be sinners. Yep. So now you want to the law. You, yeah, that's it. Yep. Sin is the transgression against the law. So you always make people do that. But when he said, I'm not no sinner, oh, so so what, what? <laughs> that's hypocrisy in, in its highest. Right. I called him out on it and I asked him, couldn't answer me. Couldn't answer me. Because Paul see. <laughs> because Paul see. <laughs> Didn't even read it. Titus 1 and 9. Titus 1, verse 9. Go ahead. Holding fast the faithful word, as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. There it is. Sound doctrine. Ain't it simple. Sound doctrine. It's going to exhort. It's going to warn them. It's going to convince the gang says because they only teaching that type of stuff for uh money or for likes for personal gain gain saying so All you right. can look righteous somewhere in somebody's eyes but see when you hold fast that faithful word through that sound doctrine cut them down go ahead and read for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. Uh huh. Especially they of the circumcision. Ooh, especially they of the circumcision. Israel, Israelites. He said many unruly and vain talkers. That's a vain, vain, vain conversation to sell somebody that ain't, they ain't got to keep the commandments. In fact, that is so vain, it's wicked, devilish, evil. Deceive us, especially they of the circumcision, because they want to take you somewhere else. So they do their own thing. They come up with their own doctrine. The Lord said, look what he said about them. Go ahead and read. Whose mouths must be stopped. Whose mouths must be stopped. You ain't got to grab them and gag them. You ain't got to sock them and hit them in the mouth. This doctrine, doctrine, like he said, that sound doctrine is what's going to shame them. Because they ain't going to have nothing evil to say about you either. Mm, yeah. Like the book say, whose mouth must be stopped. And look what they do. Go ahead and read. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Teaching things that they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. For vanity reasons and vanity purposes, yea, deceiving, lying. False doctrine here, false doctrine there, just to get their own way of feeling good. Ain't got nothing to do with trying to get salvation or even trying to get somebody else to salvation. Mouths got to be stopped. This is why we got to teach this word. Because it's sound. This is what we put on the table. When you put this word of God on the table, that's power. And can't nobody get around it. 
the word even itself, it esteems they work that they don't turn upside the God's work they don't turn upside down and destroys it. That's the thing. Let's go back to uh Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. And I'm gonna throw in one after this one before I do another one. Second <laughs> Timothy, the fourth chapter. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, and verse two. Go ahead. Preach the word. Mm -hmm. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Doctrine. Preach the word in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke with all long suffering. That means I'm going to be patient enough. Hopefully, your eyes going to be open to see this thing. But I'm coming to you with this book. I'm coming to with you in that order, like the Lord say. Doctrine. I ain't going to come and bring you my opinion. I ain't going to come and tell you how I feel. I'm not going to tell you what I think. I'm going to tell you what's on the Lord's mind, and I'm going to bring it to you, and I'm going to open the book, and I'm going to let you see it for yourself so you can be convinced in your own mind. That's how we got to do this. Why? Go ahead and read. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And this time is here. They will not endure sound doctrine. Mm-hmm. Instead of dealing with sound doctrine, what they do? Go ahead and read. But after their own lusts, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. After their own lusts. There it is again. Filthy looker. Mm -hmm. Filthy looker say. After their own lusts, heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. These teachers ain't coming to them teaching no uh, sound doctrine. Teaching them to keep the law, the commandments of God. The feast days of the Lord, they only wants to hear something that makes them feel good. That's them itching ears. Scratch my itch. Teach me something that I just want to hear. I don't want to hear no truth. Prophesy lies if you got to. Mm -hmm. Because smooth. they don't. They don't. That's what they call them soothsayers, gainsayers. Yes, sir. Another word is liars. All right. That's exactly. Right. That's right. <laughs> don't want to endure sound doctrine. Well. Itching ears. Tell me, my mother in heaven, even though I know it's not proven in the word of God, even though I've never seen it, but just tell me that. This is what we're dealing with today. They will not endure sound doctrine. They have itching ears, heaping themselves, teachers having itching ears. Go ahead and read. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth mm. and to be turned unto fables. And turn unto fables. I don't want to hear the truth. Tell me, my mother in heaven. Tell me God changed this Sabbath day from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week. Tell me that I don't have to keep the commandments no more and I can do whatever I want. And God going to love me unconditionally. Because fables. Those are fables. That did not come from God. Tell me that God loved me unconditionally and there's no uh, 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 consequences behind my doings when we have seen that God from the beginning drowned the whole world in Noah's day. Had a man stoned to death for picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. This God will take action. This God will move. This God do things. Who are you talking about? Where did that doctrine come from? It didn't come from the word. It is not sound. Like Brother Mike said, it's unsound. Mm. It don't have a distinction in it. I never heard that before. Unconfirmed. Unconfirmed. <laughs> Just the one I want to throw in. Go to Isaiah, the 28th chapter. Just want to throw this one in there real quick because I got one more. <laughs> Isaiah 28 chapter and verse 9 and 10. Isaiah 28 verse 9 and 10. Go ahead. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? That's it. Go ahead and read. Who? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Whom shall we teach knowledge? 
whom shall we make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk. You read first Peter, the second chapter and verse two, it said, that's the sweet milk of the word. Mm -hmm. Those are bred from the word. That's how you got to deal with it. And drawn from the breast. Go ahead and read. For precept must be upon precept. Precept must be upon precept. Go ahead and read. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Go ahead and read. Line upon line. Uh-huh. Line upon line. Uh-huh. Here a little. That's how we doing it. Go ahead and read. And there a little. Here a little and there a little. We getting pieces here and pieces there. We going all over the place. Because this is how you teach doctrine. This is how you teach knowledge. Yes. It don't come any other way. You have to do it this way. This is how the Lord is telling us to do it. You don't do it in this order, then there's no light, there's no truth in what you're talking about. My Lord. Now let's go to the final place. Let's go back to 2 Timothy, the third chapter. 2 Timothy, the third chapter, and verse 16. Great lesson, brother. Great lesson. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16. Go ahead and read. All scripture. It's given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And Brother Mike pointed out to us, the scriptures are from Genesis to Malachi. From Matthew to Revelation is the testimony of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's right. All scriptures is given by, and he even read that Peter said, we have a more sure word of prophecy. We got more sure word in those scriptures. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God. Go ahead and read. And it's profitable mm -hmm. for doctrine. It's profitable for what? Doctrine. Profitable for doctrine. What else? For reproof. For reproof. I can show that you wrong when you wrong. Go ahead and read. Right. For correction. I can correct you when you are incorrect because correction is the way of life. And the Lord said the words that I speak, they are spirit. They are life. Go ahead and read. For instruction in righteousness. You mean I can be instructed through the scriptures? Exactly. Yes, you can. So the instructions is always the same. It's sound. The instructions is always the same. It don't change. And it goes for all men. It don't go. God is not like, well, I instruct you to do one thing and I instruct you to do something else. No, it don't go like that. One law for all. Mm -hmm. One gospel. One spirit. One doctrine given by one shepherd that's right this is what the scriptures is profitable for all for the purpose of what go ahead and read that the man of god may be perfect uh th thoroughly furnished unto all good work that the man of god may be perfect thoroughly furnished he got everything he need in his house yes, to be yes. comfortable for good works so that he can do what's good in God's sight mm -hmm. so he can receive a righteous reward when yes. it comes. Yes, Jacob. This is sound doctrine, brothers and sisters. Sound doctrine, even sound doctrine of the word. That's right. I thank you. Amen, brother. Sister. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, brother. My Man, pleasure, that, brother. The people have to learn, man, that you, you can't serve God on your own accord. You got to serve him on his accord. That's right. The only way you're going to understand that is through reading his word. Amen. And Amen. It, now, it don't fail. <laughs> Amen. All you right. cannot run on your own. So uh, now that we uh done with the lesson, we go, we'll go ahead and go to the uh, Q&A part of the uh, program. If anybody got any questions, they can ask them at this time. I don't know, Jacob. There ain't no questions, brother. Hey, that's not brother. a bad thing. That's a good that's, thing. That's sound doctrine there, brother. That's sound doctrine. That means that it was understood. Yeah. So far, yeah. none. none. <laughs> so far, none. That means the people are fully fed. Yeah. Like you say, he gonna send his word out. It's gonna do what it's what it's sent to do, man. It's gonna perform exactly what it's sent to do. Amen. Just like Nehemiah 8, they say you make the sense. So you make the sense to the people, they understand. Amen. There are no questions. 
And no some. questions about it. You know, and you know, and Daniel, when the queen was telling Daniel about uh uh uh, uh when she was telling Belshazzar about Daniel, she said, Your father made uh uh oh, top yeah. master the magicians or whatever. This guy can dissolve doubt. That's, right. That's what the word of God would do, it would dissolve your doubt and don't leave you. Well, I wonder. Well, I'm guessing. Well, mm. maybe. What do you think? No, no, you're absolutely sure about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure, man. But hey, if, <laughs> exactly. if there's no if there's no questions, man, we can we can just close out. If you guys got any word of the exhortation, say on. <laughs> I, I, I got brother. one, thing, right, brother Jacob. If I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm, um, can we go to just one one scripture? Ecclesiastes mm -hmm. seven and twenty seven, because brother Jacob was talking about the sound doctrine, how some kick against it. The Lord is laying this out for everybody, but nobody is listening and they're doing something. They're coming up with something on their own. Actually, it's verse 29. Ecclesiastes 7 and 29, and mm -hmm. I read it real quick. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright. So the Lord did what he was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And he gave man what he needed. Man decided to do something. And it says, but they have sought out many inventions. They came up with their own thing. That's this right. Word, the law is done away with. My mother's in heaven, but I'm giving you sound doctrine and you're kicking against it. I made you upright. You went your way. So now you have joined Satan in the lake of fire. And I just want to add that. Exactly. They're going right back to Isaiah 29 chapter. Lord, you had no understanding. So let me do my own thing. This, yeah. I, this They'll understand this. Right. Exactly, 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 bro. Man, Many inventions. Appreciate that. Appreciate All, right. That. All right, man. With that said, man, we'll go ahead and close out. If there's no uh nothing else, uh, we'll go ahead and close out, brother. Go ahead with the uh song with the Lord's Prayer. Praise right. God. It was a pleasure, brother. Pleasure being here. All right. Pleasure. We'll close out. Our Father which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And we, we always invite everyone to uh, visit all of our social media platforms with the Israel of God. You can find them on our website. And as always, you know, seek God, seek understanding, seek knowledge and wisdom and serve him with all your heart and all your mind and always adhere to sound doctrine. Amen. Peace. Amen. Good night. Everyone. Welcome to Sound Doctrine Studio and Israel of God production. Join us Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time to hear topics taught by teachers of the Israel of God's worldwide ministry and proven by the Word of God. Each lesson will be followed by a Q&A session and closing remarks. You won't want to miss it. The day it came into my life, Lord, I truly want to thank you, Lord. Lord, I never knew what I was missing, peace that passes all understanding. I'm so grateful, Lord, for what you did to me, made me a new creature. Thank you, Lord.